In the rugged mountains of British Columbia, the legends hang as heavy as the mist. And for over a century, one legend has loomed above the rest. It's the story of old Slumac, the Salish Indian. The story of one of the greatest gold mines ever found, and the curse that hangs over it still. There are no photos of Slumac, only reports full of gaps and puzzles, all centered around gold. It is said that in the 1880s, the old Indian came down out of the hills carrying huge nuggets from a hidden gold mine. No one knew where the mine was, for each spring, Slumac simply disappeared, and each fall when he came back, he had more gold than ever. Rumor had it that Slumac was a killer, that every year he took a pretty young woman off to the mines with him. In all, nine women who were never seen again. How much is true? Only one thing is certain. In 1891, Slumac was arrested for the murder of one Louis B. and hanged. The secret of his mind went with him to his grave. But for over 100 years, treasure hunters have been looking for that mine. Uh, every year in the spring, somebody will call me. Usually three or four or five people will call me. And they'll say, has anything new been found on Slumac? Where else can we go to find stuff on Slumac? And there's two or three little books out that are basically reprints of the same thing, I believe. And people still look. There are people who said they found it. Um, other people have tried and failed, and, and uh, I imagine next spring I will get uh, other people in here wanting to go and look for it. The hunt begins in the Wild West town of New Westminster. But you've got a typical town that has a western flavor to it. You've got boardwalk sidewalks and awnings and a large main street. Uh, lots of saloons and bars and uh, hotels, restaurants, stores churches, schools. And this was a, uh, uh, a very bustling spot. And Slovak became known for the fact that he would disappear and then come back into town. And, and you can imagine that people in town would know when this character was back, that uh, he was back in town and it would probably buzz through the city pretty quick. You know, in, in, pretty, pretty quick. You know, Slovak is, is uh, in such and such a store um, and uh, he's got another bag. So. Today, nothing is left of the town of New Westminster. It has long since been swallowed up by Vancouver, a modern metropolis, an urban industrial center which looks forward to the future, not back to the past. The romance of the old Wild West can no longer be found here. Yet, only 60 miles north of Vancouver, Everything is still as it was in Slumac's time. It is here at Pitt Lake that the old Indian would set off each spring, heading up into the mountains. And it is here that the trail for the legendary gold mine begins in earnest. We have come to Pitt Lake to unravel the dead man's mystery, to start our own search for Slumac's gold. Here in the woods and waterways at the foot of the Canadian glaciers, we travel through a timeless world, a world almost exactly as Slumac would have seen it. Our guide is Peter Vellners. For years, he's been following Slumac's trail and piecing together his story. Well, he was an old Indian guy that uh, used to come out of these mountains somewhere and bring his gold into New Westminster, into the saloons and trade them for beer, his food, and then come back up in the mountains and stay up here for long periods of time and then come back out of the mountains. 
The story goes that uh, he used to take women with him so that he, they could, they, they suppose, squeeze into a small crack to get the gold out. But uh, from what I've heard of, talked to about his relatives, they say that's not true. That's just the, uh, the propaganda, I guess, they, they made up in those days. Even Stumack's death is controversial. Uh, he was hung for the murder of Louis B., a, another Indian guy from the same area. And they had been uh, enemies most of their lives. <clears throat> and apparently, uh, Louis B. had always been threatening him and bullied him. And finally, in fear of his life, they say he shot Louis B. Every year, Peter spends some weeks at Pit Lake. Like Slumac, he exchanges the society of men for the loneliness of the mountains. And as he does, he thinks of the vanished gold, which has never been found. It's there. There's too many people saw him bring that gold out of here, and he, he's from here, born and raised here. He never went very far. Some people say he got it from somewhere else or he robbed other people, but I don't think he would have ever gone that far away from here. Many treasure hunters have come to Pit Lake looking for Slumac's treasure, and many have died. It is said that with his last breath, the old Indian put a curse upon his gold, a curse on all who would follow his path. And over the years, this terrain has certainly proven deadly. It's the roughest country in the world. You go in, the weather changes so fast in here, you can get stuck in these mountains. Uh, just about 30 people have died directly because of looking for Slumac's mo uh, gold. And this includes search parties. Parts of search parties have got lost and, and fell down or died of exposure in these mountains. Yet a list of dead men, no matter how long, cannot deter someone who has been seized by gold fever. Every treasure seeker relies on his own experience and concentrates on one goal, the mine. And rumors of the occasional gold find, small as they may be, only enhance the legend. And there's been many guys looking for it, and a couple have found gold in here. But they didn't tell anybody either. They are all silent, the dead and the fortunate few. So which way do we take our search? Peter has set up his tent along the Pitt River. Perhaps this time we'll be lucky. The camp is comfortable. The weather, fantastic. August weather, sunshine, blue skies, no wind. A good time to set off on Slumac's trail. It is a journey for which there is no strategy. Peter follows his instincts and the few clues that Slumac left behind. He would take, he would have to follow the tide up from New Westminster, which was the city he went to, to here. So we'd have, sometimes it might take him two days to get here, but once he got here, they say three days in, one day out. The next morning, we set off on our journey. Peter is one of those very special types that seem to thrive in the Canadian mountains. Trailblazers and loners who find their way around the wilderness better than the big city jungles. For the past 20 years, Peter has been spending the summer in these Pit Lake Mountains, always in the shadow of Slumac's legend. Each year, he sets off, following the Pit River, wandering ever further up towards the headwaters. is not a journey to be taken lightly. The terrain is treacherous, the paths unmarked. There is no one to turn to here for aid. hills, there are few simple trails. But each new path brings a new adventure, new discoveries to be made. This time, it's a dilapidated gold camp, a ghost mine long uninhabited. That's the old gold camp? This is somebody's old gold mine. Yeah. Looks like at least 50 years old. Yeah. 
maybe 80. Slomak was not the only one looking for gold at the turn of the century. British Columbia was the land of gold creeks. The earth smelled of gold here, and this smell drove the prospectors into the wilderness, where they lived, alone, godforsaken, just a few tools to keep them company. All their old axes and frying pans. And they had to carry that all in here. The tools are rusty, the camp abandoned. Did the prospectors who built this cabin find gold? They must have. They wouldn't have built all this unless they came in here first and found something. And is that the area where Slumak was? Yes. But if the story of Slumak is 100 years old, the story of this forest is much, much older. These trees are 1,500 years old in here, some of them. And a friend of mine fought three years to save this valley from loggers. For Peter, the hunt for the Lost Creek Mine is more than just a search for golden nuggets. That's because over the years, Peter has come to believe in a broader definition of treasure. This is the gold here. Here in the ancient forests of British Columbia, there are no cars, no telephones, just lush green woodlands, a primeval world along the banks of the Pitt River. On Slumac's trail, the reward lies not just at the end of the journey, but every step of the way. Here, the waters run fast and pure, and plump salmon swim in abundance. For Peter, the true wealth of the forest lies not in gold, but in freedom. The search for Slumax mine it is the key to a life like that of the old days of the Wild West. A life unspoiled, uncomplicated. The people who live in the forests of the Pitt Lake Mountains love the solitude but when dusk rolls around they enjoy a few hours of company around the campfire immersed in the old tales of mysteries and legends always leading back to slumax gold i believe it's here somewhere there's people come in every year there's two three people still come in every year looking for it and uh, i believe it's still here Danny Jarrock has heard his uh, share of Slumac stories. Is this place? Yeah, Slumac, from what I hear, I was talking to a fellow here about a month ago. His great-great-grandpa logged up in this area, and Slumac worked for him, and he said that uh, the one day they used to go back and forth by ferry out here every two weeks, and the one day they went out, Slumac had a nugget the size of his hand when he went out, and the guy that swears by this story that uh, Slumac had this nugget the size of his hand. All tales of the legendary mine end with Volcanic Brown, who apparently did discover part of Slumax gold. Volcanic Brown, he, uh, they found his last camp at the top of the Stave Glacier, and they never did find him, and they found 11 ounces of gold in his camp. Nuggets. So, uh, Volcanic Brown was definitely on the right track. Volcanic Brown began his search for Slumax gold in 1923, 32 years after the Indian's death. He himself was then already 76 years old, a living legend. For Volcanic Brown was like the region around Pitt River, as rough and craggy as the ground he walked.
Brown was a pioneer in a land of pioneers, a jack of all trades who never stopped dreaming. And in our dreams, he lives on. If we want to find Slumac's mine, then we'll have to follow old Brown's trail. The next day takes us higher and higher along the banks of the Pitt River to an old hot spring where Slumac and Brown were said to have warmed themselves. These waters still bear minerals, and Peter is always on the hunt, checking for gold, searching the soil and the currents for any glittering trace. Maybe he'll strike it lucky, like Volcanic Brown, who challenged fate even as an old man and really did discover gold. But three days into our journey, we are still far away from the glaciers where old Brown set up his gold camp. That valley there, those ridges, that's where Vol Volcanic Brown was looking for his gold. It's hard to understand how old Brown could have walked to the glacier. For Peter, it's clear that we'll need some help. Well, the best way to get into these mountains and look around is with a helicopter. From here on out, we'll take to the air. For we don't want to tempt fate in a region where a curse hovers. Slumac's curse would, in fact, fell even volcanic brown. In the late summer of 1930, Brown failed to return from the mountains. In the fall, a group of men set out in search of him. The men found his camp and 11 ounces of gold. But of Brown himself, there was no sign. He had simply disappeared. Brown would never be heard from again. What willpower men like Slumac and Volcanic Brown needed to set off into such a fierce and hazardous world, an untamed realm of wild animals and barren peaks. Slumac and Volcanic Brown accepted the challenge of the wilderness. They braved the cold, the ice fields, the storms, the unforgiving terrain. They were loners, hard men in a hard land, taking on the unpredictable moods of nature. And they were rewarded with the greatest treasure the earth has to offer, gold. Today, there is no trace of Volcanic Brown's camp in these mountains. Our search has come to a dead end. And yet, there is one more trail, one more clue to be followed through the jagged coastal peaks of British Columbia. For Volcanic Brown was not the only person to venture this far in search of Slumax gold. Another treasure hunter reached the ice fields of the Pitt Lake Glacier looking for the Lost Creek Mine. His name was W. Jackson, and he left behind a written record. In 1901, the American Jackson was one of the first to set out on Slumac's trail. He, too, was smitten by the curse. But in the weeks before he died, he wrote back, claiming he had discovered Slumac's mine. I came to a place where the bedrock was bare, and there the bedrock was yellow with gold. Many treasure hunters carry copies of this letter with them, and experts claim that it's genuine. 
Uh, the original letter was date stamped from a government office, and that date stamp I examined very closely. I know who found it, and uh, the letter is interesting, and it's probably the key to it. Uh, it uses certain phrases that were only used in the 1880s and 1890s, such as light out and O with an O, which is an American phrase. So um, the original letter is genuine. Uh, there is a, an area there that was some three words left out. We think it's uh, a blind canyon. Uh, there's no doubt that, uh, that Slumac had something to do with it. Um, I'm not sure. It has been called the Slumac treasure. I think that uh, Ishotwell or one of the others did find it. I don't think there's any doubt about it. He makes, uh, he makes certain comments about the Bank of British North America in San Francisco, and he calls San Francisco SF, which was usual with the Americans. So um, when you look at that letter and go over it very, very carefully, it's not like other letters that sometimes are genuine and sometimes are not genuine. This is a genuine letter. And the terminology makes it genuine. And the date stamp makes it more genuine. Bill Barley is himself a treasure hunter of the old school. Since his childhood, he has been roaming through the ghost towns of British Columbia in search of traces from the past. I'm a researcher of the Old West, and I've picked up some treasures, yes, some small ones, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand uh, dollars $25,000, some a little more. I missed one that was uh, would now be worth about $3 because I was a little careless, and I was the only one of the other, the only other one to know about it. And uh, I waited too long. I waited six months. I should have gone in uh, six minutes. I didn't. And when I was a kid, I walked through the ghost towns and when I walked through those ghost towns, the thing I remember very, very vividly was walking up the boardwalks, which were still there, looking in the windows of the stores, and everything was still inside. The pitcher and basin, and the, the one-armed bandits, and the, uh, the roll-top desks, and there was dust inside and cobwebs coming down. They'd simply walked away from those towns. They'd simply walked away. And that stayed with me ever since I was a kid of about eight or nine years old. And there were a number of those towns all through that mining country. Because the towns only lasted as long as the gold or silver lasted. Once that was gone, they were gone. The search for Slumac's lost gold mine is also a view through a window into another era, an era which captivates us still. In our journey through the wilderness, we have sensed the legacy of the past. Here in the solitude of the Pitt Lake Mountains, the legend of this loner has come to mingle with the landscape. And with each retelling, the myth keeps growing. There are a number of, of, of extra stories. The, this is more than just one man and a, and a little story about his gold. I mean, this thing, this thing really goes. Most people who deal with it simply look at the fact that he did kill someone. And there are comments that I have read and other people doing research that was more than one person. Um, I think that it's, it, it grows with the legend, but it all comes back to this thing that there, the legend grows, but there was this man, he did something bad, he paid the penalty, and he was finding gold. In the moment of his death, Slumat took his revenge with the scariest weapon of the Old West, the curse he placed on all the treasure seekers who would follow him. And there were many who did. Jackson and Brown and all the others who wandered through the storms of the Pit Lake glaciers. Yet, is Slumac's curse not the curse of all treasure hunters? The irresistible lure of hidden gold? Always looking for the gold. I believe it's here somewhere. There's people come in every year. There's two, three people still come in every year looking for it, and uh, I believe it's still here. No, I think it does exist, and uh, maybe it wasn't as big as everybody thought. Maybe it is, and... We just haven't found it yet. Yeah, I think that the Slumac uh, treasure does exist. It's there. Some say that Slumac's ghost still hovers over the Pit Lake Mountains, that his name is still whispered by the wind, the river, the trees, and the mountains. 
It is said that the echoes will never leave this lonely land until his gold is found.